Hi everyone, Angus Campbell here, Wednesday the 16th of September 2020. So, uh, back on the Fury SS as promised. Recently, as you're aware, we've been focusing quite a lot on the, um, just do a slow pan round, um, on the A70. And... Uh, now that uh, that appears to be fixed with respect to uh, the head gasket, I've not been out on another test run on it yet, but I've been doing um, several runs in the garage to tune it, and get it warmed up, make sure it's okay. So uh, we're about ready to uh, to go out again on that one. And uh, also, three days ago, two days ago, I was out on the uh, on the Rocket Three as I attended the um, East Midlands branch of the BSE Owners Club, which meets at Sharnford in Leicestershire, and has just restarted meetings tentatively following uh, COVID lockdown, etc. So what we can do now then um, is get back onto the Fury as. Um, I intimated in the last video and also following the sort of interlude with respect to the documentary that I recently published on uh, on these three three bikes so we can get back onto the Fury build. Now just to recap uh, the head is still away at Ward's Engineering in Rugby for um, some work that involves firstly having valve seats inserted into uh, into the head and and some machining finishing off primarily around the areas for the uh, tappet the bucket tappets and um, and valve guides um, and also we've got some bucket tappets that um, I think are um, are ready almost to uh, to be collected that have been made up from drawings and uh, that's quite an involved job but we'll we'll come on to that when we actually get the parts so uh, there's nothing much we can do to finish off the engine just yet uh, while we're waiting the head and I should get an update regarding when we might um, when when that might return uh, in a couple of days time at the end of this week hopefully but what we can do in the meantime is work on the exhaust and we need to do that because firstly we've got a set of pipes and those pipes were made up by uh, Russler Racing, Martin Russell, in Birmingham at Kitts Green, from the uh, the Bandit, the Bandit patterns, because um, this Bandit, when built up, um, came with some X Factory parts with the X Factory motor, including the pipes and. The silencers and it's the silencers now that we've got to to fabricate and certainly for the the first design of the furies because they were they did change potentially when they were intending to try and release the fury for 72 um, initially these were intended to be a one-piece unit and effectively if you like, two two press sheets, one for each side, with a seam at the top and the bottom. Now these haven't been made like this. I'm not quite sure where these originated from, but they're they're very very good in imitations, and they were originally manufactured as two separate silencers. But these these have been quite cleverly um, knitted together. So all of that is is a one piece unit uh clamped as in the usual way just here onto onto pipes they're quite small diameter pipes um so what we've got to do is fabricate something that closely resembles this stroke uh picks of the original um factory versions and uh, I'll reproduce a couple of those here now for you from the uh, photos of 
a bandit SS in the grounds of uh, Umberslade Hall with Carol Cleveland and uh, Tony Lomas, which were distributed at the launch. So um, let me show you those now. Now, finding anything closely resembling that is impossible. So the way I've decided to go about it is fabricate a set closely resembling the original from you know multiple sets effectively and that's because firstly what we need is a silencer length of 23 inches and but also one where we can firstly uh, install a, a reverse cone on the end and uh, secondly one that we can modify at this end for the smaller pipe and possibly possibly put a taper in as well so um, apologies for moving about a bit but um, again you can see with these pipes here there's a reverse cone which is a bit shallow from the original tapers down and then there's a, a seam there and a more of a gradient taper down to the joint and the overlap joint for the pipe. So we want to try and recreate that. Now you can't get a sort of a, a reverse cone style silencer like that that's 23 inches long. <clears throat> um, so we've got to, to make one up. So I found this non-reverse cone silencer. So this is 23 centimeters long and obviously you can get these sort of Daytona style reverse cones. The intention being that we'll saw this one off at the appropriate point and tack on this cone on the end of it. And um, in buying these, I didn't appreciate it until I unpacked them, that um, these have got the added bonus that um, these cones are removable anyway because they're only screwed on. We're not going to screw them on when we're fabricating, but it does mean that uh, we don't have to butcher this. We can just unscrew that. But... We are going to have to butcher this. So the first thing that we're going to do is need to measure the diameter of that cone once we've got it off so that then we can uh, measure whereabouts we, we need to cut this. I've estimated somewhere around about there which would mean that when that cone is popped on the end of this the length will be 23 inches. I'm not looking for exactly 23 inches because what we're going to have to do is cut this at the right point that's the right diameter for the uh, the base of the cone. Otherwise we're into uh, all sorts of uh, fabricating which I don't want because I don't want to ruin this, this taper line. Not until we get to round about here and then we're probably going to hack it, hack it there, cut a tapered slot in that so we can um, put a tighter bend in it at this end so it becomes a, a tighter cone and then we'll have to cut this off as well and reduce the, the diameter of that significantly and that being that the, the pipes the diameter of the pipes are significantly smaller and even if we use you know these adapters which are awful by the way uh, there's three of them three or four of them in there three of them even if we use all those in there, and of course I'm not going to be able to fit it with one hand now, um, the smallest diameter is still far too big. So this is going to get hacked, um, cut a fairly wide slot in it, and then we'll try and reduce the diameter of that carefully. Um, that might be a bit more difficult than it sounds, but I think if we find uh, a piece of wood that's the right internal diameter for that pipe and then we can uh, give it a good bashing and the intention then is to uh, is to weld it all up and uh, and to then get it um, probably re-chromed the, the, there's a local chromer relatively local chromer in Northamptonshire I think it's Midland Plating Company I think 
anyway, um, they do good black chromium, so they did they did these, and actually they did the um, the bandits as well, which I had rechromed when I was uh, building it up from scratch again. Um, so they they do a good job, and it comes out. I just like the finish on it. Um, there are more modern finishes now, um, particularly ceramic. Um, so we might consider that, but I think if um, if they still do the black chrome inside of it, then uh, we'll do that because it is quite a hard, hard durable finish. It does go. Um, you can see. I don't know whether you can see that on the bandit there. You can see it goes a little pale at the front, but it's quite a nice, quite a nice finishing effect. And well, they've been done for well over eight years. I know that obviously it's not done much running, but um, you know it's. Uh, they have endured uh, a bit of weather at shows and a bit of dampness in the garage over the winter and stuff. And as long as we keep polishing them, actually they come up, uh, they go, come up pretty well. So I'm I'm pretty pleased with that. So we'll do that. Uh, and the other bit of news then is right. Okay, um, I've done a little bit of welding in the past, a bit of MIG welding. Um, this was a long while ago when I was. Uh, trying to replace panels on a Triumph Stag and, and I only did a bit of tacking then. Anyway, um, a friend of mine just down the road, Matt Harmer, whom you've seen before when he allowed me to uh, use his polishing facilities for the Lightning, he's very, very kindly lent me his MIG welder with all the kit, spare bottle, um, mask, gloves, even gave me some uh, flapper dish for grinding, spare wire, tips, we've got the lot. So what we're going to do along the way with this as well is um, we'll be doing some practicing first on some uh, sheet metal. Um, but I did do a bit of a practice at, uh, at his house a week ago, so ago, or just over now when I picked, picked it up and that, that wasn't too bad. The kit certainly works well anyway. Um, if anything goes wrong with it, it'll be the operator. Um, but initially, anyway, we're just going to be tacking before we uh, weld up seams. Um, so we're, that's what we're going to do. We're going to give it a go, and it'll be interesting to see if I can do it myself. Um, if it all goes pear-shaped, then you know, so be it. I'll have to take some, um, some advice. Uh, but certainly, obviously, I've got a, a pair of each of these, so I can make two up. Um, so we'll just do... We'll just do one at once, um, and if you know it, it's beyond my capabilities to to do it properly, then even if I lash these two up, I've got another set, uh, so that if I have to take these anywhere to be to be made up, at least I've got um, the reference points to to what I'm, I'll, I'll need to explain as to what I want. Right, I think I think that's it by way. Of an intro for now. So first things first, um, I haven't got any um, wide dividers to accurately, uh, quickly measure the, the diameter of these. So uh, we'll probably have to revert to um, an old cloth tape measure. But at least um, what we'll do first is more accurately mark up exactly where we want to cut this. And there's two ways of doing it. We could attack it with a an angle grinder. But what I'm probably going to do, actually, um, because I always find angle grinders just bloody frenetic and uh, sometimes a, a little bit uncontrollable if you're not careful. So I'm probably going to attack it with uh, a good big hacksaw with a sharp blade. And um, that sounds very tedious and slow, but actually I've, I've done it before. Um, Another another story for you. So, in the in 1978, I bought an 18 month old T160 Trident with 1500 miles on the clock, and uh, it was a really good bike for 10,000 miles before it did the usual and uh, one of its big end bolts nuts came undone. 
Um, but before that, as well, what happened, as is usual with um, the, the standard reverse cone megas, not reverse cone megas, the annular discharge silencers, is um, the ends rot out. Um, and that happened on on my Trident. Um, and it began, they began to look a bit of a mess because I was using it in all weathers. Um, so what I did was... Um, had a dig around with a screwdriver and saw that there was a and if you imagine this is a you know an, an annular discharge silencer um, about a third of the way down from from the end of it there's like a gatling gun baffle in it so what it did was uh, measure it up and um, saw the silencers uh, shortened them just in front of that so they had like a gatling gun uh, view from behind on both sides my god it was loud but anyway they're pretty easy to saw through in this case as well we'll do a bit of experimenting because you can see this has got screws which uh, i don't know i can't i'll need to investigate what on earth they are they could be torques which i can do yeah i think they're torques so we'll undo those and take that end out and see if you can actually remove the baffle because there is quite a substantial baffle in there which you can see and we'll see if we can get that out and see what there is and um, if necessary we'll uh, we'll shorten that baffle so we can put it inside uh, this comb when we fit that so okay there we are first things first let's measure up and see if we can get uh, a more accurate line than that rough and ready one there Well, I'll measure up with a flexi uh, tape measure. Then, um, you know, perceptions lie sometimes to a certain extent. But it looks like the diameter of, of the base of that cone, when uh, mapped to, to this mega, comes out just before it begins to flare there. So I think what I'm going to do first then is we'll take that baffle out with Torx and we'll also take that, um, that cone off too and we'll get a better idea then be able to marry them up. Right, yeah, these are T25 Torx. <laughs> there we go. Beautiful fit. Oh, we wash it. I would imagine this is going to need some uh, gentle persuasion. Imagine that's the whole lot going to come out as one, is it? Anyway, let's right. Let me have two hands, and I'll give that a bit of jiggery pokery and see if we can extract it. Um, and then, with respect to uh, do the reverse cone. They, that came out fine. Metal's a bit thinner than I anticipated, but I think it'll be all right. But anyway, it should be easy enough then to uh, to uh, prepare that to uh, to accept it. And actually, yeah, it's going to be going to go a bit further down than I thought. Actually, 
with respect to what we need to uh, carve off. So we can do a bit at a time anyway, but first of all, um, I'll bring you back once I've uh, extracted this baffle. Right, there we are. Baffle out. You can see this plate here is mounted onto that plate there. And initially I thought that's going to be bloody awkward because that plate is exactly where probably we want to think about sawing this flare off. But I'll come back to that in a sec. <coughs> but just looking at this, it's a pretty crude affair really. So, uh, basically, gases go up there, or alternatively through those two outer holes there, but hopefully up, up that centre board most, most of the time. It's got a bloody great dent, cut and dent there, so the gases come out into the outer chamber here, and in the body of the silencer, and then... You've got another cut and a dent here for it to go out again. Through that centre hole, which also has some uh, a bit of a bit of side baffling there. But it just means then effectively there's no straight through route out. Pretty pretty crude thing, but it's fairly heavy. Uh, and in the end, I just needed to um, ram. Ram a, uh, a a bit of tube or whatever up the up its backside and push it from the other side and it popped out easily enough. Right, going back to this plate though. So you think right that plate is right in the way. However, the way that plate is held in <clears throat> is by it being effectively pushed in and then the end here on this flare, the end of it turned over on top of the uh, an edge, if you like, on this on this bracket. So I think if we just cut this flare off here, that'll cut cut off the bend, and I think this will this will just pop out, and then we can uh, measure it properly with uh, with the cone. Which which will go in there. We might not need all that metal on it either. We can, but that's again that's easy enough to uh, to cut off. Right, first things first. Let's just get this this flare off and get the old hacksaw working. Okay, we're on our way. That's always a good feeling when uh, the hacksaw blade cuts through uh, the top. So you've just got two edges to to go out now. So it's going to speed up. So that's okay. Yeah, it might have been a bit quicker with uh, the angle grinder, but it'd be a right bloody mess. And I'd rather try and get um, you know pretty flat cut on the end. Uh, we might have to do a bit of trimming afterwards, but um, I much prefer to do it this way. Actually, gets you fit at the same time as well. So uh, we're on our way, and I'll bring you back once we've uh, got all the way through. Right, everyone, this is um, several days later because um, that job took a, a little longer than anticipated, but we managed to get it done. So, ignore the cone, or the reverse cone on the end of the moment. What we were doing was sawing off the end of this mega, and all we did was just take off effectively a ring that acted as a rolled over lip to hold this in and that was there to hold the baffle in. So in taking the the outer rolled over lip off then uh, yeah with a couple of bashes this just popped out of the end. So this was just pressed in and then effectively the end of the mega was rolled over over this lip so that's done and now what I've just done is just tapped in the reverse cone off that one and uh, that's going to work actually there's a, a bit of a lip to, that we've got to um, just clean up first but that's just a, a bit of a first fit and 
yeah you can see there's a little bit of a lip there but it's not going to be too drastic and also obviously we're going to be filling this with with weld anyway i was um i was tempted to screw it on again but that's how it, it wasn't like that on the original so uh we'll weld it properly and, and do the proper job now what that does mean though is that the length of this is about an inch to an inch and a half too long really it's about 20 just over 24 inches rather than 23 and that's because we couldn't cut as much off the mega as we'd hoped to make it the same diameter as the uh, the reverse cone end cap uh, however i'm pleased with the way that's turned out that's fine um but um what it does mean we can is that we can focus on the other end because we've got some work to do any anyway we've got to actually cut this off and and take a slot out of it so we effectively reduce the diameter of that for the uh, for the pipes which are a lot thinner um but we've also got to put a, a bit of a steeper taper here anyway down to that smaller bore and that's just um, just to show you again just to replicate what we've got there it's not it's not well lit up but you can see there's a seam there and then there's a steeper taper down to the small bore to go over the pipe so we've got to do that anyway so that gives us actually the opportunity to uh, shorten this at this end which will be fine because if we if we take an inch out of that we'll have a, a wider bore here so we'll have a bit more of a taper down and we want more of a pronounced taper this would have been um, you know a, well there wouldn't have been almost the need to to have a sort of a second sort of steeper gradient taper down to the bore uh, but now we're going to replicate that it does mean that we're going to be we're hacking off here and then we'll shorten it by an inch and then we'll hack it there and then we'll put a V in that and create a cone from it. So that's going to be the, for me, as a, as a non-metal worker, that'll be the challenge. But it's not too difficult as long as we've got something we can make a former up from. And, and actually, my bench, it's unusual, my bench doesn't have those sorts of tools on it for, for metal work normally. More spanners. Um, now, the, the final consideration then is the baffle. We're going to try and put this baffle back in. So the next thing to do is, uh, this is only pressed in lightly at the moment, this reverse cone, so we'll take that out and we'll see that where that baffle fits. And if we need to push it a bit further down to be a press fit, um, that's not a problem. We can just reduce maybe the diameter of that or even allow it to bend on its own. And we'll see where this end up, this end ends up within the, uh, within the taper. So let's do that now. Well, there you go, literally two minutes later, actually. All I had to do was, uh, when I put the baffle in, it was a bit proud, but I uh, gave it a bit of uh, gentle persuasion. So it's now a press fit in there. And obviously we can uh, put a couple of tacks on that to keep it in place. Uh, but it's now been pushed in sufficiently to allow the end cap to sit on it does need a bit of a tap to press it in um, and you see there's plenty plenty of overlap so we'll be able to uh, get a good a good weld on that now I understand that um, welding on chrome can be a bit uh, dubious um, so as I say I'm uh, I'm not a competent welder but I am I am gonna have a go at this myself and Matt's kindly lent me all the kit, including all the safety kit too, and spares, etc. So we are going to have a go at this, and I'll read up, or maybe um, uh, if anybody could comment about the best way of prepping this. I do have, I do have the right acid to dechrome it, if that uh, is going to be the best best plan. So um, I'm pretty pleased with that. Obviously, we've got some work to do yet at this end but as an introduction to uh, to the completion 
or, or the fabrication of um, the silences, then uh, I'm pretty pleased with that. At one point, I was contemplating whether to go back, whether it might be easier to uh, put the reverse cone back where it came from and then to extend this, but that, that would never have worked because effectively the taper would have had to to decrease so we could lengthen it and then uh, increase down to to the bore and that that just wouldn't look right at all so i think uh, i think we're on the way so we'll leave it there for part 1 and then part 2 the next one um we'll start doing a, a bit more butchering in the meantime as well we'll just uh, gen up on um, best way of prepping this prior to uh, MIG welding. Now um, in other news, firstly um, Stafford next month is off, postponed as expected really. So um, although most of these are prepped, in fact as well the lightning's ready for uh, another test ride since sorting out um, the points and I'll come on to that in a separate video as to what was wrong there. Um, the reason I'm going all the way over here is because I've received the bucket tappets which I've had manufactured. And there is one now. It's surprising how many engineers had to be involved in this because it's quite a complex piece to make with respect to, to it having to be hard and carburised. Also at some point dropped in water um, after getting to a certain temperature and then ground and you can see They've ground the outer surface very nicely, but what they've forgotten to do is the top also needs grinding with a very, very slight radius as well, which is all on the drawing. Uh, but anyway, at least I know the diameter of these are right. And um, we're just getting ready. It's now, it's now Friday the, where are we? 25th. Um, on Monday, I'm going over towards Engineering Rugby, who've, who've got the cylinder head, um, because he's making good progress with that. I think the, the valve seats are in, the valve guides are in, and he's now ready to uh, bore the cavities for the tabbits, tabbit buckets, these. So we'll take this over, so um, he's got a more, more accurate piece to, to work with for clearances. But secondly as well, I'll take some advice from him as to whether he's uh, got access to someone who can finish the top surface of this. Other than that, it, it's done. So, we're back on sort of two fronts on the Fury SS now, finishing off the engine top end and, uh, and the exhaust. So we'll leave it there then. Um, Quite a lot of rambling on this one, but hope uh, it's given you some insight as to my train of thought, etc. Um, thanks very much for watching, everyone. Thanks as usual for comments and interest, and also any subscriptions, appreciated. And uh, I'll see you all again soon to crack on with this following uh, a visit to rugby in a few days' time. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. Bye bye.